Jeremy is the creator of The Box Assassin, which now has over 5 million views when literally a week ago it had like 1 million, which is why this video probably has so many freaking views. While yes, this one talked about The Box Assassin in the full entirety, I think it's very important to draw back the curtain and figure out who was the creator of this project. What did he do? What is his past like? What other things has he created? Because yeah, while it's cool to see his awesome success and I'm so proud of you Jeremy quite honestly I now figured it was about time to go in depth with him as a person behind the box assassin like yeah we, we love this animation it's cool and all and thousands of people millions of people love it but at the core who is Jeremy who is this guy who who are you starting where the box assassin is held there's a bunch of other short films that are also present here as well as animations on his channel, he also has a bunch of behind the scenes type content, which is really inspiring to see, especially if you want to go in the animation field yourself. I think this is definitely a fun little tool that you can look at if you want to do similar 3D stuff as him. From here, if we go to the about section, we can notice that he has a website. On this website, there's plenty of animations, drawings, and paintings that he's created. Two very notable things about this one site is that one, under the unlucky pirate, it not only shows the animation, but the progress of the animation from drawing to lifelike project. And then under store, Dang it, I was gonna buy something. Something you can buy is movies. I mean, I'm sure we've all bought a movie in our time. For me, I bought this one right here. I bought Donnie Darko. It's a really weird movie, but uh, it's on my shelf. This is one movie I've bought, right? So considering movies as a topic of discussion, apparently he's worked for Disney in 2019, Blue Sky Studios in 2020, and DreamWorks Animation in 2021. What? No wonder the box assassin is so incredibly animated. Dear goodness, this man's got some talent. <laughs> On his website, he also has a link to his Instagram, which I'm not gonna lie, it really freaking helps with research to try to figure out the chronological order of this guy's creativity, because there's a lot that this guy has done. And while it does catalog that he was first public about his progression about learning animation in 2012, as well as show the progression of him being slowly and slowly more and more invested in creativity as a whole, he's made the same mistake as me where we both had the same exact Instagram Instagram account from 2012. Gosh, I regret that. <laughs> Around that age, he did films when he was younger, claiming to be an aspiring filmmaker. Oh, also, and I'm just now realizing this, he actually won three awards. How did I not see this before? They're all on his Instagram. One for a music video, one for his 49 hour film, and then one for being an animator. As well as creating Minecraft animations, then original character models, then photography, and then back to drawing, and then finally, computer animation. So within nine years of Instagram content to scroll through, <laughs> there is one gem that I found, uh, which is very interesting because I think Jeremy might hate me for this, so I'm sorry, but uh, I found your old <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> and the reason I wanted to find some older content is because I wanted to contrast what he's doing now with what he's done originally. Because let's be real, I feel like every 14 year old has had a YouTube channel where they either do short films or Lego animation. You can't tell me otherwise. So yeah, That Guy Productions was a duo channel with him and I believe his brother. You got four years worth of short films, promo videos, tutorials, trailers, parodies, behind the scenes content and that. So from 2012 to 2017, this channel was going on for about five years with his brother. Since the box assassin has blown up, Jeremy has done a ton of interviews. There's so much information I didn't even <laughs> glance at because it's just way too much to read. But there is one of my uh, new favorite quotes from him that I'm going to read. I'm not going to memorize it because it's way too freaking long, but it is very important and I think we can all glean some knowledge from this. I think the most important thing was learning how to receive feedback. One of the most helpful things is finding people who you can trust that will be upfront and honest with you while not tearing you down. Even after finding people like that, I often felt overwhelmed by what they would tell me. When that happens, it tends to make you less inclined to keep asking for more feedback. 
I always remind myself to not take feedback personally and only as something to get better and improve your work. This is something I have to do on every project to this day. Remove myself from my work and be open to others' notes. It's good practice to try and learn the deeper problems behind a note. Overall though, I think it is better to be quick to listen and not put up defenses. And this is one of my favorite quotes by Jeremy because I heavily relate to that, you know? The whole reason why I've changed my content this year is because I want to be more genuine. And over the past year, my friends have told me, oh, this isn't you and your content, right? And I didn't want to accept that, you know? That was feedback and criticism on my own creativity. And I get very particular about my creativity. I don't really get offended over much. But when you talk negatively about my creativity, that's my hurt spot. Like, that is one where you can actually offend me, right? And so I've had to learn how to take feedback constructively. And that's very difficult to do. And I think a lot of people relate to that, especially creative people. Non-creative people, too. I mean, like, criticism hurts sometimes, but you got to learn to take criticism from people you trust that is very important right that's why i don't ask for advice from most people there's only a few people that i ask advice from but i think it's very important to have those people in your life and to not be so serious about it you know like be chill about it be cool and i think a lot of people take it seriously i took it seriously i sometimes take criticism seriously when i really shouldn't i should take it constructively and do life better with it you know and i think that's very important to know you know criticism is fine as long as you can glean some understanding from it that's the important part and then use that to better yourself in general creatively personally what however you can relate to it i think that's very important in life